Hey, Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com. It's about 11.30 Central Time, and I am still in Houston, Texas, where the flooding has been absolutely incredible and devastating all at the same time. There are, are going to have to be new words to describe this invented because it's truly beyond the imagination in some of the areas, the scale of it, and uh, it's really sad to see because so many people are going to be displaced, so much property is going to be ruined, and it really makes it difficult to be passionate about something and is energetic about something that is causing so much heartache. But we must go on. We must talk about it, make sure people are aware of the latest information. And again, I hope that you are continuing to use me as only, and certainly you are, one of several sources of that information and with that being said let's take a look at what's going on tonight fairly quick update but just to brief you on everything uh, tropical storm Harvey now uh, approaching the coast again which is just unbelievable that it may get back out over the water winds are 40 miles per hour the pressure up to a thousand millibars and is moving east southeast at about three miles per hour the center of circulation is scroll down just a little bit and here is the next potential tropical cyclone, and um, this would be number 10, depression number 10, once it forms, or if it's a tropical storm, and it's up there. It's basically 90%, uh, so that's, that's coming, and this will eventually be tropical storm Irma. So let's look at Harvey real quick and the latest details from the National Hurricane Center, and we can see their track takes it out just over the water here, and then up inland uh, across parts of uh, the Galveston Bay area east of Houston and then finally dissipating hopefully somewhere up here uh, in Arkansas in a few days and so this is going to bring the threat of very heavy rainfall across a good deal of this region and of course even more rainfall here in the Houston area and elsewhere not just Houston this is a problem for a lot of areas, but Houston, of course, is getting the big focus because of the sheer population density here and the obvious energy interests, etc. cetera. Um, but there are other areas that are having to deal with the flooding, not just Houston proper. So let's go back to the other page here, and I want to click on a very important graphic, and this is the rainfall potential for what's left over of Harvey here, and this purple shading uh, right in here, both of these purplish colors, and really from inside the red area on, anywhere from 10 to 20 more inches of rain on a, in addition to what has fallen. And then you see there's a really large area overall of very heavy rainfall. And it's not just the flooding that's going on now, but it's the river flooding that's going to happen later. All the different river basins in this region, you definitely want to consult if you want to know what to expect, your National Weather Service homepage, I'm going to show you that in just a moment, to get more information about what could flood from the river perspective after Harvey has exited the building, so to speak, and the rainfall is done. It's not over after the rainfall quits. So here we have what will eventually be uh, Irma, and you can see here the forecast takes it right along the Carolina coastline and up uh, across maybe parts of the Outer Banks, we'll just have to see, and then eventually on out into the open Atlantic. I figure this will probably become a hurricane, and my guess is probably peaking out around 85 miles per hour is just my preliminary guess here, because this region does some funky things to these systems, and I think it's going, and the, and the Atlantic's very warm. It's warmer than normal. And everything this year that has gotten going as we saw with Harvey, especially as of late, has reached its maximum potential before making landfall. Franklin did. It just ran out of time over water. Harvey certainly Category 4, and here we go with this system. I fully expect it to strengthen to a hurricane out over the water, so we'll see if I'm right about that. All right, so the satellite picture for uh, this evening, this is the unenhanced infrared loop. And here is the center of circulation for Harvey right over here. And you can see the spiral rain bands continue to move into the system, bringing energized bands of showers and thunderstorms to the area. 
And that's going to continue for the next several days, plural. So you just have to hunker down. I mean, there's not much else to say except that this is obviously a catastrophic situation. It has lived up to the uh, advanced billing and the so-called hype that this needed to be hyped up. When the National Hurricane Center uses a word like catastrophic, you need to pay attention, and this is very representative of that. Off the southeast coast, uh, a little bit sheared at the moment, as you can see here with these upper-level winds, some of this coming off of Harvey, in fact. But this will eventually develop and move on out, like I said. And you folks here in the Carolinas, windy, rainy, squally at the beaches, and dangerous surf conditions. Uh, I know it stinks, but, you know, that's the way it is. It's hurricane season, and you just got to be ready for these things. Tropical wave out here trying to flare up. Not yet mentioned by the National Hurricane Center. I didn't notice it developing in any of the models. But we'll watch it nevertheless. And then trying to come in here on stage right will be, I guess, Invest Area 94L eventually, if memory serves. Or maybe 93L. I don't know. But we're going to have to watch that area very closely in the coming days. So like I said, the National Weather Service homepage uh, talked about this a lot in recent days, is definitely your one-stop shop for what you want to know. As an example, Houston, Texas, 7001, and you get Houston, Texas, and on the landing page, all kinds of information. And so if you want to know uh, about the rivers, that's going to be contained in here as well. And uh, there's a lot of info there. If it's in red, I think you should read it and read the stuff that's pertinent. You know, some of these are going to expire pretty soon, but when you have these, like, civil emergency messages, you need to read those. Hurricane local statement, you need to read those, all right? And then the flood warning is going to pertain to the rivers in a lot of cases, as opposed to the flash flood warnings. But that's all going to be right in here uh, on the home page after you put in your zip code. So try to use that. Uh, that's my advice. I think it's very helpful, and it'll give you what you need to know for your local area, and that's what's so important. Looking at the radar, uh, I want to look at the high-resolution version here, and we can see that Harvey still takes up a great deal of real estate here from its rain bands over the Texas coastal waters, all the way down here, extending into the Gulf, trying to feed back into this thing with the low-pressure center located somewhere in here, probably. And once it gets back out over the water, even just a little bit, it may try to energize somewhat and increase in intensity again. And don't forget, too, uh, heavy rainfall over parts of the coastal area, the I-10 corridor south into southwest Louisiana over here. And this is all part of Harvey as well. And this was advertised several days ago from the National Hurricane Center mentioning that the lower Mississippi Valley would be impacted by these rainfall totals from Harvey as it moves in. And then, of course, just off the Carolina coast here is the growing, fledgling, what will eventually be tropical storm, Irma. So there's a lot to keep up with. It's still only August. Luckily, we've only got a few more days to go. But... What a memorable August this will end up being, and then we have to get through September and October, of course. And I'll be here right with you to keep you updated. Uh, it has been a saga so far with Harvey, let me tell you. But, you know, we've got a lot of good people behind the scenes encouraging me and uh, those that have helped me out here in the field, Carrie and Todd, who live here in Houston. And I appreciate that very, very much. I appreciate uh, the people who have made it possible not only by helping out financially but just the words of encouragement and a lot of times you know the paycheck and being able to pay the bills is obviously how I'm able to do this but the success stories and people telling me that I've helped make a difference in their lives that really matters a lot uh, right up there with obviously being able to afford to do this we're getting really expensive here with the hotel room etc but it's worth it and Peter, yes, I accidentally said, et cetera. It's an inside joke between me and one of our stakeholders on the Hurricane Track site, uh, et cetera. Anyway, I'm 
tired and so I'm rambling as I try to sign off. You guys stay safe in the Houston area. If you know people around here, tell them to stay home and not try to drive out. I know they're going to get cabin fever, but you must stay off the roads. Don't use these lulls that are going to come to try to venture out because uh, it could break and you get a lot of heavy rain again, and then you're trapped. All right? All right. Well, that's it for me for tonight. Mark Sattleth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. And you bet I will have more for you tomorrow. And if I don't, it will be our good friend Zach Fredella in New Orleans, and he's been helping out, and uh, he'll step in when I'm too busy. Have a great rest of your Sunday, and I'll be with you as we start the new week ahead.